Welcome in to the Arkansas Sports Network's Hometown Sports Football Preview. Proudly presented by Arkansas Tech University, D3 Auto Sales, and Metcalf Trucking and Trailer Repair. Today, we're sitting down with the head coach of the Conway Christian Eagles, it's Justin Kramer. This pigskin preview is sponsored by First Community Bank. Historically, you know, this is a program that has had a lot of success in, in 2A and for a long time was uh, a regular in the quarterfinals pretty much every year. Um, what's been some of the things that you've done to help uh, get the team back where you want it to be as far as, you know, the number of wins that we have every year? Yeah, I, I mean, it's a great question. I don't think, honestly, uh, I don't think it's anything that I've done. I've, I've been consistent, if anything, maybe, um, in that, you know, I think uh, our school, our families, our, our administration, our kids, um, they, they've understood where we've been. They've understood where we've been trying to go. And more importantly, they understand who we are. Um, and although for us winning is extremely important and, you know, we keep score and it's competitive and we want to, to win and we want to compete for state championships and we want to do all of those things, but, um, we don't ever want to do those, um, in sacrifice of who we really are, you know, and that's just a, a school and, a, and an athletic program and a football team of, that's trying to help build young men and godly men. And so, um, I think just staying that course and just staying consistent with that and, and a lot of guys sticking it out, you know, I mean, in a day and time where it's easy just to up and transfer or school choice or whatever the new cool slogan is now, um, you know, we had guys stick it out and again, go through some really tough times and, uh, some coaches go through some really tough times that could go other places and honestly make a lot more money and do a lot less work, but they believe in who we are and what we're about. And um, so the short answer is I don't think it's anything I've done. I think it's what I've done in conjunction and with cooperation with so many other people. Um, and it's fun. It's exciting to kind of, you know, get to go through those things. And a lot of people don't have those experiences, you know, they, they just want to be a part of something already great. Uh, and the reality is building something or repairing something is, it's got a lot of intrinsic value. And, um, so it, there's a lot for our school and our kids to be proud of. Yeah. This program has gotten a lot of benefit from new facilities that we that mm -hmm. have been built here in the last probably year or two. Uh, what are some of the things that you think, uh, you know, last year, the off season, you had these things to yeah. go into next season with. You know, going into year two, kind of getting adjusted to what you have that's new, what you have that's that's kind of um, helping the program get back on track to where you want it to be on a year-to-year -year basis. What do you think are some of the things that uh, these new facilities help uh, the team with every year? Yeah, I mean, the, the easiest answer is the weight room. You know, we went from a, from a weight room that was about a 20 by 20 square mm -hmm. with two racks that, you know, on a bench press day, you could... You could get most of the team in there, but if you're doing power clean or something like that, then for safety reasons, you could only get so many and workouts were limited because you could only get so many kids through through a workout in a, in a lot of amount of time. And, you know, you're constantly deciding what do we not do? What do we do to kind of accommodate um, that lack of, of equipment or lack of a facility and in our new weight room is is the exact opposite we can get everybody in there plus you know some uh some other programs that they if they happen to be working out at the same time so we can lift every male athlete every female athlete uh in our school regardless of of team that they participate on um at the same time and that's that's been a huge part because um you know you can get an entire quality workout in and a in a you know 40 45 minute hour long uh, window and so you don't feel like you're compromising to do that and then you're getting the benefit i mean the safety benefit the prevention of injury benefits the performance benefits i mean our guys have gotten so much stronger uh it's incredible um over just the last year coach ellen's done a phenomenal job we've we've put a person in him and coach ellen uh 100 over all of our athletics uh 
weight training and, and, and conditioning, and he's done a phenomenal job with that. And so that's been a big part. Um, our new locker room is it's really, really nice, um, nicer than, than probably most anybody's locker room in the state. Uh, even on the, like a D2 college level, it's really beautiful and, and that helps and it gives kids something to be excited about. And, um, so as a school, I think we've done a good job and it goes back to that support thing that, that I spoke of earlier with our families and, and our administration. So let's talk a little bit more about the X's and O's of the, you know, the actual football team. Yeah. Uh, typically spread offense, pretty, you know, pretty similar thing every year. Um, what is, is there any kind of adjustments or anything that you're going to be doing different with the offense this year? You know, you've got a third year quarterback returning, third year running backs, two of them, they're coming back. You've got a lot of experience on the offensive line coming back, you know, losing one starter on the offensive line from last year. Are you going to be doing anything different with the offense this year? Uh, different, probably. Uh, that's a loaded question because we always, honestly, at our level, we're always doing something a little bit different based on where your strengths are, where you're where uh, your other, maybe some deficiencies are at or, or weaknesses or inexperiences or however you want to wear that. Um, so yeah, it'll, it'll be a little bit different, but um, you know, the experience that we gained last year um, is huge. So if anything different, we'll get to do more in depth version of what we've already done. You know, it's one thing about what we do offensively is it can, it's simply complicated, you know, and, and so it can be complicated, but it's very, very simple once you kind of get into it and it, it has multiple levels. And so, you know, I feel like we got to kind of this level and we did it really well. There's other things that we can do um, off of those things. So they're not really different. They may look a little bit different. Um, but with Jaron coming back, like you said, Xander Stone did a phenomenal job last year when he came in at quarterback and he'll be back and those two will kind of battle for that spot. And um, the beauty of that is whichever one gets it, the other one's a great receiver, so that helps. Uh, and then you've got, you know, Aaron Lovelace and Brady Demarcus returning at running back, and both of them were really, really good. I think Aaron went for about 900 or so, and Brady went for 11 or 1,200 yards, something like that. And Caleb McKinney moving back from San Antonio, Texas, will be give us a third running back, more of an H-back type guy. Uh, so, you know, um, I can definitely see us – Running the ball, you know the old saying: when you throw it, there's two things, but there are three things that can happen to it. Or bad. Mm-hmm. I don't necessarily believe that if you do it right, but it is awful nice just to turn and hand it to a really good running back or let a quarterback run or or whatever. But we've got some talented receivers too, so um, it looks spread like, and you know this. It, it's oh, I don't call it spread, but it does look like spread. Um, and so I think just the short answer is. Not a whole lot different, just more of in depth of kind of the same thing. Mm-hmm. I found it interesting that you said that Jaron's spot isn't locked down. You know, right. everybody expects him to come in and be the stud that he is. But you know, you said you think Stone's going to give him a run for his money. Yep. You know, so talk to me a little bit about you know the quarterback position next year. Obviously, everybody says it's the most important position in football. Yeah. So you know, like you said, the offense can be complicated. You know, it's hard to get down audibles and things yeah. like that. And now you've got two quarterbacks that come in expecting to win that job, I'm sure. Yeah. So how do you handle that, you know, situation of you've got two really talented guys trying to get one spot? Yeah, I, I will. First of all, I think a lot of it's more about how they handle it, you know. And I don't think I would be a very good coach if I just decided in April or whatever who the starters were next year based off of something that happened five or six, seven months ago, you know. Um, kids develop, kids change. Hopefully, as coaches, we coach kids up. And um, man, we're always trying to create a situation where guys are battling and fighting for spots. I think there's value in that for the kid. I think there's value in that for us as a team. Um, you know that that nobody's spot safe. I mean, last time I checked, my job as a coach is not always safe either. So, um, you know, I, I think there's there's value in doing that if you do it right and create a, an environment of, of competitive drive, um, guys wanting to succeed and excel at specific positions or specific spots, and then understanding that that the beauty of where we're at is if you don't get that, there's a role. You know, there's a role for everybody uh, for the most part with us, and, and it may not look like you want it to, but if you're um, if you're a person of selfless character and you're more interested in uh, team success and you're more interested in the big picture, which is what we try to push. 
um, then those individual things don't matter a whole lot. Mm -hmm. um, but you, they matter enough to fight for them, and that's all that matters. And so um, they handle it all really well. Um, all of our kids do. That's with every position. I mean, we've got guys fighting for running backs. We've got guys fighting for linebacker spots. we got, I mean, that's just part of, I think, having a healthy program. Mm -hmm. So I want to talk a little bit about the defense. I know that's not your, your forte. I know that's Coach Allen's <laughs> area, defensive coordinator usually. Yeah. But what have you been impressed with? You know, I understand that practices are just now getting ramped up yeah. again. What, have you, what were you impressed with last year, and what are you excited about, or what is your expectation going into this year uh, for the defense? Well, I think I think the main thing is last year, guys that had to contribute that that we weren't sure uh, would have a role, if much at all, uh, that ended up not only playing considerable amounts of snaps, but but really really well at an all all conference level, and some of those guys that. Um, you know, like a Bo Campbell who had no plans of playing linebacker when the season started, ended up being an all conference linebacker for us, you know. Um, guy Bryce Keithley at one point leading the team, the state in interceptions. And, um, you know, you know what you get with a kid like that, but you just don't know how it's going to go. And he ends up leading the team in interceptions, tackles, uh, tackles for loss, like, you know, um, so I think that, you know, we dealt with a lot of injuries last year. At one time, we, we started a game with, with seven starters on the sideline, which at a, a double-A level is inconceivable that you could even compete with seven starters on the sideline. And the reason I think we did not only compete but win um, was because of our defense. Now, there's a lot of times I, I think there was one game Coach Ellen gives me a hard time, but I cannot specifically remember which one it was maybe Atkins, but anyway, the, I think the defense scored more than the offense did. So there was there was times last year that, that we were who we were because of what our defense did. And I think that's, a again, a testament to our kids and our program and just the, the reality of, hey, here's who we are, here's where we're at, let's go figure out how to get it done. Um, and they did a great job with that. All right. Um, so going into this season, you've got a lot of, of key contributors returning, you know, it's very important um, to every team, you know, not just a team that's, you know, kind of coming back from where they were, you know, trying to get back on the, on a really competitive level, you know, there's really high expectations for the team this year, just like there were last year. And obviously you have to deal with that, but um, who are some guys that you think are going to, are going to step up and be, you know, just off the top of your head, obviously there's so many of them, but who do you think is going to be a, somebody who might you know, come in and be a, a breakout player who might, you know, shock everyone? Yeah, that's a great question because I, it's easy to talk about Jerry and Thomas, Brady Demarcus, Aaron Lovelace, Garrison Greer. You know, it's easy to talk about Deegan Meeks and Bryce Keithley, like those guys that have kind of always been there, you know. Um, the ones that, that maybe are, are going to make a splash, uh, of, of course, um, um as Andrew did last year as a quarterback and at the end as a receiver, I think he'll be one that has a great year. Kyle Kane is the first one that comes to mind that uh, when Deegan got hurt, Kyle's role had to substantially increase. And as a sophomore, uh, he just stepped up kind of fearlessly and handled the job at, at the seven, which is for us kind of the main uh, receiver spot as far as a pure receiver. He's gotten bigger and faster and uh, I think he's going to have a great, great year. Uh, I think he'll be a name that that most people haven't maybe heard, and uh, that'll that'll jump up, jump up really, really quick uh, for sure. Of course, our linemen, which you don't ever hear their names anyway, but um, you know, with Finn and uh, Maddox and Landon and those guys, they'll have phenomenal years. Um, and then uh, Preston Elliott will be at a safety. He kind of came at the end of the year and played a role a little bit. He's come a long way. So, uh, you know, we anticipate ha him having a great year as well. And so we've got a lot of guys coming that, that unfortunately or fortunately, however you want to look at it, get overshadowed a little bit by the uh, kind of maybe some of the bigger names. But 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 we wouldn't be who we are without without those guys. Yeah. Uh, so what are what are some of the the strengths of the team that you that you view as something that you can use to your advantage uh, besides experience obviously that's a big one yeah I, I, I think balance maybe um, we joke 
about how so many of our kids look like they came out of like this Christmas cookie cutter box. You know, they all kind of look the same. Um, but I think that's a strength too, because they're so versatile. You know, uh, Deegan Meeks can literally play almost anywhere. Bryce Keithley can almost play anywhere. Um, you know, you've got guys that can play linebacker, but they can also play safety or they can come down and play in. Like we just have a lot of guys that are versatile. Um, and so I think that gives us a, an opportunity to be successful because football is a game, unfortunately, that has some injuries or that has some, uh, you know, unfortunate situations like that. And so the ability to move guys around and kind of plug and play and maybe not drop off a whole lot, um, it's really, really nice. And then, you know, that senior group, um, there's so many of them. I mean, um, and they've all pretty much had experience and they've all uh, kind of been tested. And so um, experience is a, is a big, big part of that. So um, talk a little bit about last season, because there's a lot to build on, obviously, a, a trip to the quarterfinals for the first time since like 2018, I think. Um, you know, heartbreaking loss, you know, kind of got started off slow in that game against East Points of County and then came back and 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 tried to finish well. I'm sure you've probably replayed a couple of those things in your head over and over again about how it could have gone different. But um, what, what are your, some of your takeaways from last season that you want to help build on for this year? Yeah, I mean, that's kind of it. You know, it's it's I say a lot of times I think sometimes I'd rather just get beat, you know, uh, it's hard to look back at a game and go, man, if I'd have done, if I'd have made this decision or if I'd have made this call, uh, here, maybe it would have been different. Or if this kid would have made this play, then maybe there would have been a difference. Or if this penalty hadn't been called, you know, it's so easy to do those kind of things. Um, and it, it's, you got to remind yourself, you know, we lost three games last year. All three of those teams played for state championships. Um, North Platte played for the Missouri State Championship, and the two we lost to in Arkansas played each other. Um, and we had a chance to win those games. Um, and so uh, knowing that, I think, is, is a motivating factor. And then just learning from our mistakes. I mean, even someone that's been doing this a long time, I mean, I make mistakes. I don't I don't hide from those. I don't uh, – I'm not one that, that – tries to act like I do everything correctly. I know that I don't, I'm human and, and we're all gonna make mistakes. So kind of just learning from those and doing our best not to make, at least not make the same ones, you know, make different mistakes. Uh, and then you just kind of see how it goes. I mean, football's a funny sport. Um, you know, a play here and a play there changes the whole outcome of a game. And so just trying to make sure that you're prepared and you're ready to be on the, the winning end of those situations as best you can is, is I think, a big part of it. So going into next season, going to face a lot of familiar teams. Mm -hmm. But one of the um, teams that uh, we haven't played in a while is Hazen. That's mm -hmm. going to present a unique challenge. First game of the year, you know, everybody's going to be trying to work out the kinks. Everybody's going to be trying to, you know, get things um, as perfect as possible and as impossible to do in week one. You know, they're usually a team that's at the top of their game year in and year out. What kind of unique challenge do you think that they present and um, – in the first game of the season and then going into the rest of the season, what do you see as some of the opportunities or challenges that might face the team? Yeah, you know, and that's something I've always done and um, is when I think we're going to be pretty good, I try to get non-conference teams that are really, really good. Um, I don't want to come out of non-conference and feel like we've got it all figured out. I would rather, I don't, I don't want to lose, <laughs> but I would at least rather know uh, where we where we need to improve and the things we need to get better at and what we actually do well um, because we did them well against a good team. So I'm I'm more about information so that we're ready for the games that matter and that's what the Hazen game is about. They're extremely athletic. They're very very well coached. Uh, they have history tradition um, and so starting the season off with with a team like that is a big deal. You know our scrimmage game is Mayflower, a larger school. Uh, that'll present a test. Um, and so, um, you know, I, I just think it's important in that regard to to play a team like that. And, and you come off where your last, you know, your last game was against a, a state runner-up. Um, let's start it off with, with another really good team and see if we can kind of uh, 
get things rolling a little bit quicker and figure out where we're at so that we're ready once we get into conference and we play teams like Hector and Mount Ida and Bigelow and, uh, you know, those guys. Mm -hmm. So this group, obviously not a whole lot of experience with them outside of maybe some weight room stuff so far this season. Um, practices obviously aren't quite in full swing yet, but you know, what is, what is this group specifically mean to you and what are you excited about with these guys? You know, a lot of seniors on this group are going to be going into their last season. Um, what are you excited about and, and what do you think might be some, some things that, you know, you look forward to working with this group for one more year? <laughs> this is probably not going to be the answer you would have expected. Um, and I, I, you know, I don't know if it's the one I would always give, but it's the one I'll give right now. Um, it's just the relationships. Like we, it's so easy when you think you're going to be really good to focus on the athleticism, to focus on the winning, to focus on the, hey, we think we've got a chance to play for a state championship. Like that's really easy to do and overlook uh, the character, the value. You know, we have Thursday morning devotionals. We average, you know, 20, 15, 20 kids showing up on their own just to come be a part. They're always laughing and hanging out together. You know, you've got guys like Harrison Ward who have, been in our program and I don't know if I've ever missed a day or a workout or whatever and just finding ways to contribute and um, I, I think that's the thing like can you see all those guys hanging out and having a good time and um, it, they're just fun to be around if that makes sense you know yeah. um, and so that's probably the thing that that I am the most anticipating and the thing I'm looking the most forward to and probably the thing I will um, be the most disappointed by when it's done is just, um, man, this is a hard business, you know, and I always tell people the people business is difficult. You're never going to please everybody. You can't. Uh, you want to. Uh, not because you want to please them, but just because you want to be doing things right and, and where you think people agree with you. Um, and so it's a tough, it's a tough life. Um, and so when you get a group that's just fun to be around, that they just love doing what they're doing and um, you, you, you just want to like cherish every minute of it. And I think that's kind of where I'm at. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> when you, when you look at, um, when you look on, on social media, when you look on, you know, the message boards, when you look on wherever, you know, all the, the diehard, the people who, who grew up in these two A towns, the people who are, you know, diehard fans, you know, there's towns like uh, Dirks, Hayes and Carlisle, just Desert to name a few, all these teams that, that, you know, every Friday night, their, their fans are going to be coming. They're going to be showing up. You know, that's, that's what they do in those towns. They love their football. Mm -hmm. So you read, you read those, these people and they're kind of saying, you know, some of the teams that are going to be at the top this season, you know, Junction City coming back down, they're going to present a challenge. Yep. Mark Tree, kind of a similar situation that Conway Christian has where they have a lot of three-year starters. So you hear those two teams, and then you hear Conway Christian. Those yep. are kind of the three that people are saying are going to have a shot at a title this year. Yeah. Well, how do you how do you handle those expectations that haven't, haven't been there, you know, the last three, four, even five years maybe? Yeah, that's... <laughs> I, I don't know how to answer that question because I don't look at social media and I don't get on the message boards because uh, I'll keep my opinion to myself of why I don't get on the message boards, but I think their value is low. Um, those people's opinions and their passion and all that is definitely high. I don't mean it that way at all. I just mean uh, their their opinions of, of us or, or me or whoever. Because um, a, a lot of them are based off of hearsay or whatever. It's not that they're ignorant. Uh, people. I don't mean it that way. I just mean, I, I don't know much. And my wife is from Dirks. Uh, Dirks, the, the, we played them last Friday or last year on a Friday night and the whole town was there and they love their football. Uh, and I can't tell you a whole lot about their program. You know what I mean? There's just not that much information out there. So I don't put a lot of, of weight into that. Although I do appreciate being a part of that conversation for sure. Um, but for me, I don't, I don't think it's about managing the expectations of others. I think it's about managing the expectations of us and ourselves and, and who we are. And, um, you know, I, I personally have been in situations like this before where these kids haven't, and 
I made a comment to, to uh, actually it was Maddox Jones. We were talking about track meet the other day. And I said, dude, you got to understand where you guys are at. Like it's, this is, this is all you know, cause you're in this moment in life, but this is rare. Like this is a rare opportunity that we have. And, and some of them don't realize that because for them, this has been a three or a four year thing. And that's all they've known, you know, for someone like me, that's done it over 20 years. It's, it's not that common to, to be at this point and to realize, Hey, we've got a legitimate chance to do something special. Um, and so I think just constantly maybe reminding uh, ourselves and each other of, of the opportunity that we have and making sure that we don't squander it is probably where I would start. And then where I would end is, is you know, it's just it doesn't matter what people say at the end of the day. I tell people all the time, you, you respect the opinions of those you respect. And um you're going to hear in, in the athletic world, coaching, player, whatever, you're going to hear a lot of negative criticism and you're going to hear a lot of praise. And the reality is neither of those are, are typically extremely accurate. You know, um, sometimes we get overpraised for things that maybe we didn't have much to do. And sometimes we get heavily criticized for things that, that maybe weren't as much our fault. And so, it's more about just kind of the cliche of looking in the mirror and, and knowing that you've done what you can do and it is what it is. Mm -hmm. So, um, I got two more questions. Yeah. The first one is, um, you know, let's, let's just kind of go into the world of hypotheticals here, which is dangerous, right? right. <laughs> but let's say that, you know, it's December and Conway Christian has won the, the football state championship. What would that mean to this school and to this, this community and to the, uh, everybody around this program to do that for the first time ever? Oh, well, I think they would love it. I mean, uh -huh. I think it would be a party around here as uh -huh. far as, you know, just the excitement. You know, we've had the opportunity to go uh, in girls basketball a couple years ago and volleyball last year. And I can tell you the excitement leading into those uh, was high. And I would assume it's it would be the same. You know, that's one thing about our our school as we say all the time we don't have that small town community necessarily but we kind of have our own little thing here um and so it's definitely something i think the school would um passionately support uh and then if it were to happen um i think just the feeling of accomplishment not just again and i mean this like this sounds so coach cliche but um there's so many people here um our head of school um, our administration, our parents, our families, there's so many people here that have done nothing but support in good times and in bad times that I think it it would just be a kind of the good cherry on top of, of everything that, that doing things right or trying to do things right uh, is still the best and most effective way to, to go about business. All right. So last question, it's, <laughs> it's a, another kind of complicated one. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a successful season for Conway Christian football if. <laughs> ah. Man, it, it's a successful season. You get, you're you getting me with some of these. You're doing a great job. It's a successful season for Conway Christian if. We can hold our heads up at the end and say that's the best we absolutely had from a performance standpoint, from a how we handled ourselves, how we carried ourselves, if people look and go, I want to be a part of that school because of the way I watched that team perform. Uh, and we can walk off the field, whatever the situation is when it's over and say, that's us. That's the best we have to offer. Mm -hmm. Then I think it's successful. All right. Well, this was an interview with uh, Coach Kramer of Conway Christian. Uh, I'm Carson Ward for Arkansas Sports Network. You can find Arkansas Sports Network on Facebook and YouTube. And do uh, you have anything you want to say, Coach, before it's done? No, man. I appreciate nope. appreciate you guys. I appreciate Arkansas Sports Network. And they've grown, you know, substantially in their involvement over the last couple of years. And anything that we can do to, to shed positive light on, on high school athletics and uh, in Arkansas, I think is, is, is paramount. And so I appreciate everything that they do. All right.
Thanks again for joining us on the Arkansas Sports Network's Hometown Sports Football Preview. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the Arkansas Sports Network on YouTube to catch more previews and all the latest updates on your favorite teams.